So this week, we're taking a look at a rather popular offering from New Orleans-based Papier Plume. At first, when I got this ink, I thought that the cap had leaked and spilled through the wax seal. But upon closer inspection, it turns out that they spilled food on the label. They did avoid covering up the title, though, so I guess you could say that it was tastefully done? On each end of the label, and outside the beans, is the Papier Plume URL. Uh, I lied. It looks like they got some lunch on this URL. I do have to say, though, I like what Papier Plume does with their limited editions and popular offerings, and all joking aside, they did a good job on this label and matched it up pretty well with the wax seal. Ignore the wax, by the way. These beans may or may not have been cooked in the Arizona desert. Now, what kind of pen do you think I mixed this ink with? It was actually a pretty clear choice. I just had to go with the Graf von Faber-Castell Classic. With the metallic trim and wooden body, it felt like the perfect utensil for this meal. I mean, look at it. They go perfectly together side by side. Now, confession time, I don't like beans. I never have, and as my mother will attest, I'm the guy at the table at the Mexican restaurant making everything difficult. But having worked fast food, I can say this looks pretty spot on to what we used to have to serve. While you aren't getting sheen here, you do get all the shades from a soothing dark to a very nice faded brick red. Not a bad color gamut, but how does it flow? Well, on Rhodia, even from this medium nib, this ink kind of felt dry, but I think part of that had to do with just how this ink feels flat. My initial thought coming from that ink blot was that we are gonna get a very dynamic experience starting on the lighter side of the mid-tones and drying dark. But frankly, we don't get that here. It's not a bad thing, it's just unexpected. And because of how dry it feels on Rhodia, I was actually expecting sub 10 seconds for dry time. As you can see though, I was wrong. Even with the apparent large amount of ink from the medium nib, we are dry at just over 15 seconds. I'm still happy with that performance, by the way. Under 20 seconds is a good thing, and we are getting that dry time while still getting the nice medium reds with a touch of the darker shades. So overall, on a standard paper like Rhodia, I'm pleased with what we're getting, even though my expectations were completely wrong. Tomoe, though, is where I feel this ink finally gets to shine. You can see I'm doing the writing sample while the ink blot dries, which, for the record, took 18 minutes to dry. But back to the writing, you can see that out of a medium nib, we are getting the full flavor of the red beans and rice. And it seems that speed of writing is really going to dictate your experience. I write notoriously slower than most, and when I pick up the pace slightly, this ink stays a lighter shade almost light brick red. When I'm in my slower comfort zone, however, I'm getting a more pleasing and darker tone that we got over on Rhodia. This is definitely reflected in the dry time, however, as it's just now over 20 seconds to be completely dry. Keep in mind, on TR, this isn't bad, but we have seen better. And I think that for this ink, I'm a little more apt to forgive the slightly slow dry time, especially with the color performance. With me being a TR-centric writer in my free time, I would feel more remiss if we had the flatter performance from the Rhodia appearing on TR and having the dry time balloon on us. Getting more dynamic from the ink is definitely worth the extra 10 seconds to me. But let's go ahead and see how these beans like water. So while the ink blot was done on Tomoe, this test was done on Rhodia, and I gave it about 15 seconds from the time that the water was introduced to the time that we got the shop towel on there. Part of the reason for shortening the soak time was from some of the accurate feedback that most people are quicker in a spill to get liquid off the paper, which, once we got our hypothetical spill cleaned up, you can see that we have a pretty good result here. We may have lost color, but the gray underlayer is perfectly legible. So here we are at the recap time and about the time where I lose a bit of the audience. This isn't a bad ink, and I have no valid excuse for holding off on getting it. Red is a nice color that, when done well, is an instant buy for me, almost like turquoise. And Papier Plume makes a good product at a good price. This is no exception. I do, however, wish this ink had a variant without food on the label. I also have to agree with a few of my commenters that while the wax is a nice touch, this time I found it to be a bit too much. This was especially true after the ink ended up in 90 degree weather for more than a few hours. But that aside, I also like the fact that on top of a really respectable dry time, we also get really good water performance. So overall, I'm happy with this purchase and I'm gonna clean the rest of the wax off the cap so I can put it with the rest of my collection. But that's gonna be it for this video. 
ink up that subscribe button, become a patron for early releases and extras, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram, and remember, don't drink the ink.